Welcome to episode 13 of Comic Book Historians. Today we're talking about Popeye, the original super anti-hero, before Superman, The Thing, and Wolverine. E.C. Seeger started the Thimble Theater newspaper strip in 1919 and built up a range of sequential ability by the time he created and inserted Popeye as a side character into his strip in 1929. As he helped the protagonist Castor Oil on his adventures, certain traits about Popeye began to surface that seemed to appear in later characters that most of us know and love. Just like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and Wolverine, Popeye is an orphan. The relevance of protagonists being orphans goes even farther back than this into Little Orphan Annie as discussed in the newspaper strips to comic books episodes and appeared to be the case for most superheroes. So just like we know very little about Popeye, he knows very little about himself. However, the surprises don't stop there. One notable story in 1930 shows him taking a large hail of bullets from the villain of the continuity, which leads everyone around him to question, why doesn't Popeye die? After defeating the villain, his friend Castor Oil forces him to see a doctor who examines him feeling utter disbelief that he is simply walking around with several bullet holes. The doctor says that he will probably die, and yet he still lives through the next day. The doctor gathers a team of surgeons who operate and are only able to remove a few bullets and hilariously accidentally leave some tape inside of him. He gets some rest and eats food and self-heals himself to a quick recovery, shocking everyone around him, including his best friend, Castor. During a murder attempt with a sword, a villain notices he can't cut Popeye's neck flesh in 1933. In fact, Popeye's flesh is so sturdy that the villain mentions the muscles in his neck are like wires. Another adventure, he is stranded in the desert where the only water is a terrible poison that kills everything that drinks it. E.C. Seeger goes into depth with how poisonous the water is to ingest. Popeye decides to overcome all common sense and drink anyway, taking very deep drinks of this vile liquid. Surprising the reader, he survives drinking a gallon of this poison, and the strip calls him a Superman. This strip was in 1931, which was seven years before the first appearance of the popular Superman superhero from Action Comics 1, 1938, and three years before Doc Savage, which was referred to as Superman in a pulp magazine ad shown in the Pulp's The Comic Books episode. Not only does Popeye have super durability, internal stamina, he also has super strength shown in this 1932 strip. In this next 1931 strip, he fights a Nazillion boa constrictor. This seemed to be a hopeless situation, however, as the Nazillion villain tries to capture olive oil, they watch as Papa uses his superhuman strength to literally tear the large snake to shreds in a fit of frustrated rage in a Wolverine-like fashion. The snake is left as a bloody, pulpy puddle next to Popeye's feet. Wolverine would have a similar, frustrated, violent rage that left his enemies as bloody pulps like this more child-friendly cover to 1988 Wolverine No. 1 by John Bushima and Al Williamson. This frustrated rage would serve Popeye well in situations like this, but apparently stemmed from unresolved violent issues in his past, some of which led to him having his deformed face with a missing eye. This deep psychological pain, which Wolverine also manifested with disturbed sleep and a danger to anyone who slept next to him, also was exhibited in Popeye in this 1930 Sunday. But hey, he's got a heart of gold and everyone around him feels it. This accidental post-traumatic stress nightmare violence to anyone who happens to be in the room was shown with Wolverine in the first X-Men film in the year 2000. In 1932, Popeye had an encounter with Wu Fong, revealing that they both share a shady backstory where he spent time in Singapore and actually had allies and enemies. He is actually revealed to be a one-eyed Satan by his old friend. Wolverine similarly was known as a one-eyed shady adventurer in the land of Madripoor, the Marvel Comics version of Singapore in its pirate heyday shown here from the Wolverine series 1989. This art is by the amazing John Bushima. 
Along with this jaded, mysterious past in the Orient, Popeye has an arch nemesis who is a beastly, feral version of himself, a sailor in the character of Bluto, who first appeared in 1932 during the Eight Sea Adventure. Not only have these two enemies known each other for years before both their first appearances, Popeye represents the kinder, smaller sailor, and Bluto is a larger, stronger, and feral sailor who enjoys murdering innocent people. Their fight gets so out of hand that an onlooker comments how they have been fighting for four hours, and another calls them both Superman. Wolverine has the same counterpart in Sabretooth as shown here in Wolverine 10 1989 with this beautiful cover by Bill Sinkowitz during one of their own super savage throwdowns. But despite Popeye's heart of gold, he, like the thing in Wolverine, more than occasionally gets his frustrations out during bar fights. Bars are great locations for many anti-heroes. Both the thing and Wolverine have spent times in bars drinking as well as fighting in them. A lot of times, barfly anti-heroes like this carry plenty of pain and aggression and need a particular arena to vent that out at people who probably deserve it. Here is Wolverine in 1989 in a bar fight in a similar rogue fashion as Popeye. This was certainly the case with the Thing and Wolverine. Wolverine was introduced in a fighting arena in the first X-Men movie in 2000, and the Thing was a wrestler for a good portion of the 1980s, as shown here in this 1985 Thing comic. Popeye was no different and would at times make money boxing as a prize fighter, as shown here in this classic Sunday from 1931. In fact, he is such a great prize fighter that when he gets angry enough, will obliterate anyone in the ring, with him including the referee. In this 1932 Sunday, he is put in the ring with a robotic Iron Man and literally tears the automaton to shreds. On top of having a heart of gold with super strength, durability, PTSD, and a temper, Popeye, just like the thing, had an ugly mug with one eye, a spastic and atrophied half face that made it tough for women to be attracted to him. His interaction with the opposite sex brought about encounters such as this in 1931, where women were literally disgusted by him. It is heartwarming knowing that Popeye has a tough exterior like the finger Wolverine, but also has a sensitivity and loyalty shown in his relationship with Olive Oil, whom he defends with his life on a regular basis. And she shows she is special by looking past his outward ugliness. The Thing also exhibited this type of love, unconditional defense of his girlfriend Alicia Masters, and Wolverine received the same from his love Mariko Yashida. As these traits of Popeye become more evident and repeated in various ways, he shows a tremendous sense of self. Just as Wolverine says that I'm the best there is at what I do, and what I do isn't very nice, or The Thing says I'm the ever-loving blue-eyed Thing, so does Popeye say I am what I am and that's all that I am. It appears that not only was Popeye a Superman before Superman the superhero, he was also super strong, super healing, nigh invulnerable, ugly, anti-hero orphan with a heart of gold, decades before both The Thing and Wolverine. One thing for sure, that formula exists for each generation, and I don't think we should ever forget one of the earliest incarnations of that in comic form, Popeye the Sailor Man. Considering this comic anti-hero template didn't outright exist when E.C. Seeger developed Popeye is a testament to his spontaneous and sequential genius. Cheers.